Papa was a rose in his throat. Making, making sounds and doing the beatbox, you know, vocal percussion, you know, that kind of like helped me create my own niche. You are now with the sing the incredible, the incredible. <laughs> 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 Very talented guy. Uh, for my last example, I, I could stay here and play all day, um, but what I like to do is go to my favorite, Disney. Disney's also using Flash and starting to deliver some incredible content to people over the web. So this is the Disney Channel inside QuickTime TV. It's completely interactive. And of course you see a, a trailer here that they've put up from a very anticipated movie, Toy Story 2. Should we watch it? So I click on it, it launches another quick time window. TV, all the great content coming to you, all of this is live over the internet, nothing stored locally. This is what customers around the world, tens of millions of people can do and watch on their master PC. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Phil. Looks like a good movie. You got to go see that one. <laughs> you know, we are so excited about this QuickTime TV stuff. and. More and more content is going to be rolling on to the uh, QuickTime TV network over the next several months. It's just going to keep getting better and better. And because QuickTime started out as a technology to achieve very, very high quality, as we get more and more broadband, the quality in QuickTime TV is just going to scale right on up. And the other guys haven't even thought about how to deal with these quality issues. So we think we've got an incredibly strong strategic position for QuickTime TV and QuickTime in general. Now the second thing I'd like to talk about today is Mac OS 9. Mac OS 9, we're going to give you a little preview of it today. Mac OS 9 is the next major release of the Mac, Macintosh operating system. It's going to ship in October and it's got over 50 new features in it. Now we don't have time to show you all 50 today so we're going to show you one or two. And the one we're going to focus on is Sherlock 2. Now, for those of you running Mac 8.5, Mac OS 8.5, we shipped a feature in it last October called Sherlock. Sherlock, in our opinion, is a revolutionary feature. It allows you to search the internet in a far more powerful and easy way than ever before. You type in in natural language what you're looking for, Sherlock figures that out, and then dispatches queries to up to dozens of websites and search engines simultaneously. As the results come back, Sherlock automatically ranks them by relevance, sorts them, and displays them in one window. And it's extraordinarily powerful. But it could be even more powerful. We started to get some feedback that people wanted ways to group target search sites almost the day after we shipped it. But we've gone much further than that in Sherlock 2. And so I'd like to get Phil back up here to give us a quick demo of Sherlock 2. I the most fun thing. I get to do all this great new stuff that you're all dying to get your hands on. You've got to watch it. It's so exciting. 
We've got a Power Mac right here running a early release of Mac OS 9, so the demo gods are with us, everything will work just beautiful, things are going really rock solid and stable with our, our engineering team. They've given me this release so I can show you this one really great feature, uh, Sherlock 2, and as Steve said, this is, this, this is the coolest way to, to search on the internet. It really is like having your own search engine, your own search detective to find whatever you need. And it's done extremely well with our customers. I mean, they, we've heard tremendous feedback. They love using it, and it's made their lives a lot easier to find things faster than ever. So I'm going to do a first search here. This is a new Sherlock 2 interface. We're going to use a search, the same kind of search I might have done before with the current Sherlock that you may use today with Mac OS 8.5 or 8.6. I'm going to type in a search. For those of you who know, yesterday was the 30th anniversary of the landing on the moon by Apollo 11. I'm personally a big, big buff of that. Yeah, thanks. Very interested in it. And so what I want to do naturally is go on the web and find what I can find, what stories are out there, what information is there about Apollo 11 and the mission. So what we have here is some of the search engines all over the web that you might go to one after the other to try to find stuff with different results. And with Sherlock, we've had over 100 plugins made in the first week of shipping Sherlock, and it's just grown from there. So we have a bunch in here. You click on the ones you want to use, and I type in my search and hit search. And it's really fast. Now, Sherlock has just talked to all those different search engines, sent out the proper request to each of them, even if they handle information differently, bring it, brings it all back from all those search engines simultaneously. They all show up in this window with the name of the subject that comes back, the relevancy to the request I sent, and the name of the site or the page that it's at. So you see a, a whole lot of stuff here. It's found 71 instances out on the web from all different sites um, relating to Apollo 11 and the mission. So I can just scan it. I can click on one and get a small little bit of information returned right here to see what I might want. I can go to any one of these. I can sort it by name. I can scan down it. I can sort it by site. Oh, let's find all the ones. There's a whole bunch here from NASA you can see. Here's one on photography. Let's click that. I'm interested in mission photography. It launches my web page instantly, takes me right to the website, and sure enough, there's an Apollo 11 website with photography from the mission. Scroll down it, a lot more photography. Here's a photograph from the lunar surface. Just amazing. Within two seconds, I can search these sites, find exactly the information I want, have it jump right into my browser and take me wherever I want to go. It's all done in one simple interface. Now, all of that could be done with the current Sherlock. So if you haven't done that, you can go back, explore Sherlock, and learn to do these things. It's so simple. But with Sherlock 2, we wanted to take it to the next step. Customers wanted sets of these plugins, because there's so many, to be able to have different kinds of searches. And that got us thinking. Well, not only can we combine these into sets for customers, and they can create their own sets, but we can create sets or channels of Sherlock plugins around different types of information. So one obvious type of information is news. So I have a couple here. I've selected CNET and CNN. And now we do the same search, Apollo 11 mission, but let's go to the news sites and see what news is out there. So it goes and talks to both of those sites, gets back the news in just a couple seconds, anything about the Apollo 11 mission. And now you see we've changed the columns. Because if it's news, one of the things you want to know is date. You know, how fresh is this news? And you should see there's a lot of news about Apollo 11 mission in the 30th anniversary. Let's just pick the top one it came back with. CNN, launch the browser, go right to the page, not through, through the site, click around on it, right to the page, and sure enough, the top, top result, recent news as of yesterday, Apollo 11 mission. And go click on another one. Oh, let's see, giant leap. 30 years ago today. Go back to CNN. And sure enough, there's a story about the launch 30 years ago today. You can explore, read all about it, keep on searching. So just like before, with, with Sherlock 1, we can search for information, but now we're searching for news, not just anything on any web page. You can just imagine how far we can take this. We've got channels that let us do things like search for people. Wouldn't it be easy to find one way to click on a name and find anyone out on the internet? Well, let's say we